All right, hello everyone, and welcome to today's online workshop. Today's online workshop is interesting because the online workshop is about how to facilitate or co-host online workshops for the WordPress training team. So the goal of this session is, first of all, to introduce to you um, how you can on, uh, host or co-host an online workshop. Um, but I'm also wanting to create a like a walkthrough recording which we can then put in the training team handbook. So in future, when new contributors come along, they also have a resource they can reference um, and get a, a feel of what this is all about. Um, so yeah, I will take questions throughout the session. So if you have anything you want to ask, feel free to unmute yourself and ask, um, or you can use the Zoom chat and Laura will be my co-host and help me pick up on those questions if I missed any. Um, yeah, any, any, any questions before we get started? Nope. All right. So the main resource we're going to be using today is the training team handbook. So I'm going to drop that link in the Zoom chat here. And um, Laura, if anybody joins afterwards, if you could just reshare the link with them. Um, so the training team handbook, this is where we document how to do all the processes. Um, so if you're interested in contributing to the training team, I recommend you bookmark this. We have a lot of content. On the left here, you'll see we have a table of contents. There is a lot. Um, so I don't really recommend reading through all the handbook at once, but um, rather when you need something, um, go look for that and read that resource then. Uh, for those watching the recording, if you are brand new to the training team, I also want to point out the getting started link at the top here. Um, this will take you to the training team's onboarding program. So if you're brand new to the team, um, start from here. This is a 30 to 60 minutes onboarding program, and it will tell you um, how the training team communicates, gets you set up with a few different accounts you need to contribute to the training team. Um, and then at the end here, we have find your interest and make your first contribution. So. The training team is made up of five areas of contribution. We have content creators, we have content translators, we have editors, we have subject matter experts, and we have administrators. So these five areas work together to create content for the learn.wordpress.org website. Today, we'll be talking about online workshop facilitators or hosts and their co-hosts which would fall under the content creator um, area of expertise. So if you're interested in hosting online workshops, um, I recommend you go through the content creator onboarding first, and then um, that will give you a better foundation as you watch this video. All right, so online workshops, what are online workshops? When you go to um, learn.wordpress.org, we have four content types here. Um, and the site is going through a redesign right now. You can't easily see the four content types on the homepage. I'm just going to click into a random page here. Um, but the menu bar now shows the four content types. We have tutorials, we have online workshops, we have courses, and we have lesson plans. Tutorials are five to 10 minute short videos um, that teach a topic, um, how to do this or how to, how to start contributing or how to make, how to, add a menu to your site with the nav block. Um, so these are short videos. Um, online workshops are interactive online sessions like this one, um, where they're usually about an hour long, um, often hosted over Zoom, and people can ask questions, um, we can share information, and it, it's in, intended to be an interactive learning experience. We then have courses, which are online courses, which um, are self-guided. Um, a lot of them have um, evaluation questions at the end, so you can test your knowledge, see if you've really understood the content. Um, and finally, we have lesson plans, which um, lesson plans are aimed at teachers of WordPress. So the first three are aimed at the learners. So you can attend an online workshop and learn, you can start a course and learn. Lesson plans are for teachers to take and then teach lessons on WordPress. Um, so those are the four content types, and today we'll be looking at online workshops. Um, so online workshops are live sessions where you can learn alongside other WordPress enthusiasts. 
Um, they are a safe zone where you can come as you are, develop new ideas, explore issues, ask questions, network of a shared interest, exchange theories, collaborate on work and thrive in uncertainty. Um, so what we're aiming to provide here is a safe space where people can come and learn about WordPress. Uh, we want people to be feel safe to ask questions. Um, the, the host or the facilitator doesn't need to know all the answers. Um, their goal is to provide that safe space for contributors to share information with each other, to ask questions with each other. Um, and the co-host's role is to assist the host in creating that safe space. Um, so in, like in this online workshop right now, I am the host and I'm also presenting the content. Um, but the host doesn't necessarily have to present the content as well. The host can run the session and have a separate speaker come and present the content. Um, but the host's main responsibility is to provide that space so people can come, learn about WordPress, ask their questions, feel safe and collaborate together on learning. Let me pause there. Are there any questions so far about the overview of what online workshops are and what the main role of the host is? All good? All right. Um, so let me also share the link I'm currently on. So this is the online workshops page on the learn.wordpress.org website. Um, and so you'll see at the top here, two buttons. The first one is apply to facilitate. And the second one is view recorded online workshops. So we'll talk about the first one in just a moment. The second link here will take you to the recordings of online workshops. Um, and these are hosted on wordpress.tv with the category learn WordPress online workshops. So if you skim through here, um, you'll be able to find recordings of previous online workshops. It's not um, required to record workshops. Um, but the training team strongly advise that you do um, because um, online workshops, it's, it's hard to cater to all the time zones and people have busy schedules. And so we want to keep a catalog here of resources people can come back to later and still learn the content. Um, something else I wanted to point out is, for example, this online workshop is in Japanese. So online workshops, um, don't have to be in English. You can host online workshops in your own locale. Um, so far, I think we've had Japanese, Greek, and uh, Bengali online workshops, and we are looking for contributors who are willing to host more online workshops in their own languages. So if you're interested in that, um, do uh, reach out to the training team and we'll help you get started with that as well. All right. So coming back to the Learn WordPress website, online workshops, um, this page also has a, a calendar of um, online workshops scheduled for the month. Um, to be honest, seems a bit a, a light month this month. Um, we usually have an online workshop pretty much every, every two or three days. Um, so we might get some new events scheduled for the later two weeks. Um, but what we're aiming for is ultimately 24 hours a day, every day of the week, people will come to learn and there's an online workshop happening. Um, that's the goal we're working towards. We're not quite there yet, um, but hopefully in a year or two, the training team will have enough online workshop hosts, um, hosting content so that there's always something going on here. Um, then at the bottom, we have an apply to facilitate or co-host form. So, um, Within the documentation, we're calling online workshop hosts facilitators. Um, that is because they don't necessarily have to speak in the workshop. They are facilitating that space, creating that space where people can learn together. So if you see the word facilitate or facilitator, that is the same as an online workshop host. The um, hosts or facilitators and co-hosts of online workshops um, are vetted by the training team. So um, once again, an online workshop is a, a safe space where people can come and share ideas, learn about WordPress. And in order to provide that safe space, the training team will vet facilitators and co-hosts beforehand to make sure those hosts and co-hosts can indeed provide that safe space. So online workshops aren't hosted by just anyone. There is a, a vetting process that happens beforehand um, to make sure this, this space is a safe space. 
Um, that being said, anyone is welcome to apply. So um, if you are interested in co uh, hosting or co-hosting, um, do apply. Um, there are a few required fields here. And um, something we're looking at um, are your social network accounts. And this is one way we just have a look at your activity online and your communication in the past in public um, to see, have you been fostering safe spaces in the communities you're already part of? Um, if you don't have any social accounts, that's okay. Um, but if there, if, if there is something you can show us that tells us you have created safe spaces in the past, um, that will help us as we vet your application. There's a, a form here to apply. And yeah, that's the, that's the public facing online workshop page. We'll be going into the handbook next, but before we do, are there any questions or things people want to clarify before we move on? All good. All right. Laura, has anything caught you off guard so far? Is this, as a co-host, is this everything you expected it to be? Uh, yeah, so far. <laughs> good, that, that's good. <laughs> All right. So coming back to the training team handbook, if you scroll down to the left, you'll see we have an entire section on online workshops. So I'm gonna click into that and I will share this link in the Zoom chat again to help people access the page directly. Um, and then hosting an online workshop is broken down into a few different steps. So first of all, there's applying to facilitate. Then we have planning an online workshop. So that's more the, the content, planning the content of an online workshop. We have a page on scheduling an online workshop, um, steps to schedule a Zoom meeting. And then we have a page on actually hosting the workshop on the day. We also have a page for co-hosting an online workshop and then some resources, tools for hosting, what to do after an online workshop. And finally, for training team administrators, how to review facilitator applications. So um, at the top here, we have applying to facilitate. And um, that will take you to the form I showed on learn.wordpress.org. Um, gives you a bit of an idea of what we're looking at. Um, if you're really interested, you can also look at this page here, reviewing facilitator applications. And that will tell you the exact process we're going to be going through to, to vet your application. The training team doesn't want to make things secret. Like we want to make sure people know, people know what we're doing. And so you can have a look at exactly what we'll be doing to vet the application um, on this page here. I won't go into the details, but if you are interested, um, feel free to take a look there. Now, coming to planning an online workshop, <clears throat> I did mention a lot of online workshops are hosted over Zoom, um, but this actually isn't a requirement. Um, it's, a, it's a popular method of online workshops, um, but it's not the only way to do it. Um, another, another way you can do an online workshop is a purely text-based online workshop. Um, and I think the training team tried this out two years ago when we were starting online workshops. And what it is, is you, you still create a time where people get together. And then um, in the training channel, you can say this online workshop is starting now. And you can have the whole session there in the training channel, um, purely text-based. So if you um, are a contributor who um, might find difficulty using a Zoom or other video conferencing tool, there are other methods you can host online workshops through. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. Zoom is a popular method, but it's not the only way, way to do it. <clears throat> um, I think about the only requirement we have regarding methods is that it is online. As long as it happens online, um, you, you are pretty much free to use any tool you want um, to host the online workshop. Now, um, playing an online workshop. So you want to host an online workshop. What topic should you discuss or host the online workshop on? In the training team, um, for whatever content we create, the content topic is first suggested and it goes through a vetting process by the training team subject matter experts. Um, so the subject matter experts vet a topic to see, um, is it indeed related to WordPress? Um, is it uh, relevant to WordPress today? 
like a workshop on WordPress 2.0 probably isn't relevant today. We'd rather you did a workshop on the most recent version of WordPress. Um, and then is it is it a priority? Like, um, is, is that a topic that the community would find um, value in today? So topics are suggested, they are vetted by subject matter experts, and then they're turned into content. So if you are starting out with a brand new idea, um, you can go to the, um, uh, the training team's GitHub repository and make a suggestion for your topic. And I think this actually happens in the facilitator application form. So let me go down here. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh no, okay. The form just says category you're interested in facilitating. Um, so if you're interested in hosting an online workshop on a brand new issue, um, you would create a topic to first be vetted. And I will go and update this handbook page a bit later because this is the link we want you to go to. Um, so the training team has multiple different topic, uh, sorry, GitHub issue templates you can use. If you're starting a brand new topic, the topic you would use is the, 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 the topic idea template. So you would submit that GitHub issue, um, subject matter experts would vet that topic for you. And once it's cleared, you can host an online workshop. Um, but if you want to skip that process, um, you can actually choose a topic that has already been vetted. So the training team actually has a backlog of topics that have been vetted. We want to create content and we just haven't had the people to do it. Um, so if you want, you can choose one of those topics and create an online workshop from them instead. So that is the first link at the top here, GitHub Content Development Project Board. And on the far left here, you'll see we have a ready to create column. These are old topics that have already been vetted. We know the community needs and we're just waiting for content to be created. So, so at the moment, we have 95 topics you can choose from. Um, you can choose any of these and um, create your online workshop based off that. Um, the only thing to remember is topics need to be vetted once just to make sure they're um, relevant to the community. Um, and if you have any questions about any of this, you are free to ping for help in the Slack training channel. Um, and um, people will be happy to help you there. So Laura, I see you've raised your hand. Do you have a question? Yes. So um, out of those 95 topics, uh, I see that there's different types of content, lesson plans and such. Does it have to have, say, online workshop, or can you take a lesson plan idea and turn it into a workshop without turning it into a lesson plan? Good question. The answer is um, you can take any topic there that isn't a less, uh, workshop and turn it into an online workshop. And when you do, when you do, coming back over here to our issue templates, we also have an online workshop template down here. So what you would do is you would create a new online workshop template and say, I'm going to work on this topic, which was already vetted in this issue over here. So that helps you skip the vetting process. So for example, uh, let's see, well, let's have a look at this one. So this one is introduction to CSS. It's a lesson plan content type. So it's not an online workshop, but we know the topic introduction to CSS has been vetted. So what you can do is come back over here, create a new online workshop template and set your topic as basic CSS, introduction to CSS. The reason why it's confusing at the moment is because we are going through a GitHub organization project, which is going to streamline this for us. So that's why you have to jump back and forth a little bit, um, but that should be cleared up in another two months or so, I think, fingers crossed. Um, but basically what you're coming to this board here is to find a vetted topic. Um, so not necessarily find an issue to work on, but find a vetted topic. And again, if you're not finding anything you're interested in, um, you can create a new topic idea issue to have your topic vetted and then turn that into an online workshop after that. So it's always good too to do a search too to see if there was a uh, your topic was already 
um, mm. has a workshop too. That's so a good idea. So you can yeah, let do me, that too, right? Yeah, let me do that. Uh, so another thing to mention is you can repeat online workshops. Um, so you can take a topic that has already been done and redo the online workshop. Um, for example, I do that with my online workshops. I host every online workshop twice at two different time zones. Um, so I capture two different audiences. Um, but you can also take an online workshop somebody else did, for example, six months ago, and maybe update the information a bit and redo the presentation. So in this, so this is the content development project board where you will see all the topics um, that are ready to create, that have drafts in progress, and at the right here that are published or closed. Um, and let's, for example, say um, you're interested in teaching about domains. Um, so you can search for domain and you'll notice over in the right here, there have been online workshops that have been conducted on domains. You'll also see we have, for example, a tutorial that was created about domains, online workshops. Um, so you, you can tell, okay, this is a vetted topic. Um, you can also go into these issues. For example, um, if you go into this tutorial issue, um, at the very bottom, you'll see a link to this published tutorial. So that, that sort of helps you with your preparation work. Like you can take this video, you can study with this content and then turn that into an online workshop. Um, or coming back over here, um, online workshop introducing domains. Um, sometimes online workshops, like um, they share their slides in their GitHub issue. So I did an online workshop um, in July about introducing domains. I've shared my slides here, which means anybody else then is free to take those slides, copy them, modify them, update them, and host another online workshop on that topic. Um, so again, we want to share our resources. Um, things change. Things in the internet world change very rapidly. So an online workshop that happened six months ago could be outdated already and somebody else is free to come along and do that topic again. Did I cover everything you wanted to bring up, Laura? Yep. <laughs> Great. All right, so um, there are a few more other details here about how to plan an online workshop, um, but the most important one is the, the topic, um, to choose a topic that's relevant and the team subject matter experts are there to help you realize or uh, recognize whether that topic is relevant or not. Um, at the bottom, we have some um, points about preparing, some ways to engage your learners. Um, for example, you can run an online poll. You can have group activities where you break out into different rooms for five, 10 minutes, do an activity and come back together. You can have games. Um, you can pair people and have them share with each other. I know some online workshops have used like a share Google document and everybody sort of edits at the same time and they create something together. Um, some online workshops, we've had people like build an entire site um, from scratch there while people are watching. Um, or like me, what I'm doing right now, I'm just walking through the handbook, explaining things as we go along, answering questions. And um, that works totally fine as well. Any other questions about planning an online workshop? No. All right. So actually I did just think of something. Oh, Sorry. Now that I just yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> in in terms of the content that we would theoretically create, um, like the topic has been vetted. Does the actual content of the session also get vetted prior to being held? Yes. Yes. And I will show that in the next in the next um next section. But yes, so when you create an online workshop, GitHub issue, look, I'll get to that, yes. So <laughs> all content will get reviewed. Um, and I guess something else that sort of came to my mind while we are talking about that, you notice I did, I showed an example of an online workshop on domains. Domains aren't directly related to WordPress, but if you're going to host a WordPress website on the internet, you will need a domain. And so although it's not WordPress technology, it's still relevant to WordPress website hosting. 
Um, so that's how broad our topics can be. It can be about actually using WordPress, developing WordPress. It can be about the internet that surrounds WordPress. Um, it can also be about the WordPress community, about meetup groups, different events that happen in the world um, connected to WordPress. Um, so I, I said topics have to be vetted, but really we have a really broad net. So as long as it's remotely connected to WordPress in some way, the topic shouldn't be a problem. All right, so now we get into some of the um, technical aspects of actually preparing for an online workshop, scheduling an online workshop. So um, let's see. So, at, so coming back to the playing an online workshop, it says um, to create a new GitHub issue, online workshop GitHub issue, and add it to our project board. So I'm going to walk through that process right now to show you what that means. So um, just refreshing a bit, we're in the handbook, we're on the online workshops, playing an online workshop. At the top here, it says, um, you can plan an online workshop by using the online workshop issue templates in GitHub. So we come to the GitHub issue templates in GitHub, you'll see there's an online workshop template. So we click that and then this, this is the way it starts to get a bit technical, but this is what the host will go through, a facilitator will go through to actually plan an online workshop. So at the top, we add the workshop title. Um, let's say I want to host an online workshop about how to host online workshops. Um, and then event details. So you want to give um, some details here about what your online workshop is actually about. So the title, I'll just copy from there. The description, um, this workshop will walk through the training team handbook, explaining the process behind preparing for and hosting an online workshop. Um, so that gives people a bit of an idea of what this workshop is going to be about. Then target audience. Um, who is the audience of this online workshop? And um, we want you to think from a few different perspectives here. First of all, um, is it for, for example, WordPress users? Is it for WordPress developers? Is it for WordPress designers? Is it for uh, WordPress agencies? Um, in this case, my workshop would be for um, WordPress community members um, or WordPress educators, I guess. Um, and also, is it a like a beginner level workshop? Is it an intermediate level workshop? Is it a workshop for experienced users? Um, I would say all levels. Um, interested in hosting an online workshop on Learn WordPress. Um, so that just gives. Um, other people who come by this GitHub issue, a bit more idea of what who this online workshop is for. Date. You get to choose the date. You can host this whenever you want. Um, the recommendation is to host it at least two or three weeks out um, because once you put the event up on meetup.com, you want to give people time to see the event and register the event to make sure their schedules are cleared. Um, so I usually go through um, on about the 10th or 15th of each month and schedule my online workshops for the following month then. So my workshops are generally up about a month beforehand. Um, so for example, let's say this one is going to be on October 15th. Then meetup.com event link. Um, so if you signed up for this online workshop, you would have come through a page on meetup.com. So this page here has a thumbnail of the online workshop, has some details about the event. Um, on the right here, you'll see the time um, showed in that person's local time zone and the link to the Zoom. So once you create this event, we'll walk through creating that in just a moment. Once you create the event, you would add the link to the meetup.com event in the GitHub issue here. So the two are connected. Then for um, online workshops, we um, strongly advise you have a co-host. 
um, it's not a requirement. Um, and sometimes it's just impossible to find someone to co-host for you at that time zone. Um, but as a general rule, we recommend you have a co-host. 95% of online workshops go very smoothly without a single problem. But every so often you have people who, um, who um, are just enthusiastic about the content and they can easily derail the conversation um, or sort of dominate the conversation. Whereas we want to make it a safe space for everyone to bring their ideas. And so in situations like that, sometimes it's helpful to have a co-host who can engage with that person one-on-one -on -one while the facilitator still had, keeps the, the main conversation going forward. Um, another thing a co-host can do is ask questions to sort of, if it's like a, a quiet online workshop, they can ask questions and sort of get people excited about the topic. Um, and also on a very rare occasions, we have people who Zoom bomb. So they come in, do something inappropriate, and we need to kick them out. And so just having a co-host there um, gives you moral support. And also they have the access to kick people out if need be. So yes, if you can set a co-host. Um, and the reason why we want you to list your co-host here is because contributions to the training team are generally tracked in GitHub. Um, so the training team, we assign contributor badges to people based on their activity logged in GitHub. And so you will want to list the GitHub username of your co-host here in the GitHub issue. So we have a record of their contribution to the team and down the line, we can assign them or we can award them with the training team contributor badge. So uh, find a co-host, add their GitHub username here. Um, for example, um, in this in today's session, Laura offered to co-host for me. So I would add your GitHub username here. And then if you have other information, you can list that here. Um, this online workshop is a Japanese version of the English session hosted here and then link to English session or something like that. Like if you have additional notes, you can leave that here. Um, I will just add the word um, test. Oh. I'm actually gonna submit this GitHub issue. I'll just add that bit of information at the top so people know this is used in an online workshop. And there, so you would, you would submit your GitHub issue with a basic outline of your content details there. Then, um, this will now have a checklist at the bottom of steps you'll want to walk through to host this online workshop. So the first one is um, create an event on Learn WordPress Online Workshops, the meetup group. So that's where we come back to the handbook. And the handbook will walk you through step-by-step step how you can do this. Now, to create an event on the Learn WordPress meetup group, you will require the event organizer role. And this role is given to you when you were vetted as a facilitator. So at the very beginning, you have to apply to facilitate. Once you've been approved, you are given access so that you can log into meetup.com and create these events. Um, so again, that's why there's a vetting process there because we just don't want, we don't want to give access to just anyone. We want to make sure they are people who will um, benefit the community here. Um, so then this gives you a detailed outline of how you would actually make the event on uh, meetup.com. And the second, so once that's added, you can tick that off. The second thing you would do is annual, add your online workshop to the online workshop calendar. Now we had a look at this earlier on in this session. The online workshop calendar is this calendar here on learn.wordpress.org. So you, you have to add your event in two locations. You have to add it to meetup.com and you have to add it to this calendar. Again, if you come back to the handbook, it gives you step-by-step -step instructions of how you can do this. And again, this requires the editor access, which will be given to you when, you when your application to become a facilitator has been approved. Um, so I won't go through all the details there, but just, want you to know the steps are listed in the handbook. 
and you can follow those to add your events to these two locations. All right. Let me pause there for a moment. Any questions so far? Okay. Now the third list, a third item is assign a co-host to the event. So at the beginning, I listed Laura as my co-host. Um, generally, issues start off with a needs co-host label. And I'm just going to quickly change my browser because what you're seeing right now is an administrator's view, whereas the general view will be a bit different. So let me open that same issue um, as a non-administrator. All right, so if you're facilitating an online workshop, this is probably what you will see. And you'll see on the, on the right here, we have a few labels. We have awaiting triage, we have the content type online workshop, and we have needs co-host. Um, the way the training team GitHub board is set up, a general contributor cannot edit these. These are just um, added automatically. And then a training team administrator will come along and modify these labels for you. So the awaiting triage label notifies the training team administration team that this issue needs to be triaged. This issue has to be checked, confirmed, and the labels modified. Um, so this is what you would see. What administrator would do is, oops, there we go. They would come along, they would look at the content um, you've listed here and they would modify the labels for you. So first of all, I'll be triaging this. So I don't need to add that label. I'll see this uh, a co-host has been assigned. So I can remove the needs co-host. Um, I'll also look at the description and add a topic label. Um, so this, this online workshop is going to be about contribution and to the WordPress project. And also it's related to the training team specifically. So I'll add a few topic labels. I'll then look at the audience. Um, so audience, um, this one will be for, let's see, contributors and speakers. And we also add labels related to experience level. So in this case, um, this one is for all labels interested in hosting an online workshop. So I'll add any. Um, and that should update. Um, and then an administrator will take this off for you because this one already has a co-host assigned. Um, something that might not be in the handbook, but I think maybe we should add is, for example, maybe you don't want to host an online workshop, but you would like to co-host. And um, I think Laura might agree here. Co-hosting an online workshop is one of the easier ways to start contributing to the training team. Um, so if you want to co-host an online workshop, if you, start, if you want to start co-hosting, you can actually filter all the GitHub issues with this needs co-host label. Um, and so at the moment, you can see the training team has six online workshops that still need a co-host. Um, and I am going to add this link to the, the co-host handbook page later, because I think that might help people um, who are interested in becoming co-hosts. All right, so that, that's that was the, how- That was the, yeah. oh, sorry. That was the easiest way that I found to contribute. Um, and that was uh, one of the things that was kind of added because um, most of the time new contributors were like note takers and I was uncomfortable with uh, putting documents into the whole WordPress site yet. And so um, I opted to say, hey, can I do it, the, you know, the co-hosting way? I felt more comfortable with that uh, since I had previous knowledge with Zoom and, and hosting on, on there. Uh, so that was my way to get my contributor badge. Yeah, thank you for sharing. When you joined, did we have this co-host and online workshop page or was that created after you joined? Um, th that's why I was looking at the date. Uh, I believe after I was the one that kind of uh, got you, got the team okay. to um, instigate that. All right. So thank you, Laura. You've left a lasting impression on the training team um, by creating this co-host like page for us. Oh. 
it it's funny where where my face pops up in uh in little uh screenshots of different things too so um I'm excited <laughs> I'm excited about that. I'm in Sarah's tutorial and tutorial, so. Okay, cool. Um, so yes, I will update the documentation, but that's one way co-hosts can find sessions that are still waiting for co-hosts. Again, online workshops are hosted 24 hours a day from different parts of the world. So you'll have to sort of click into each online workshop to see if it's something in your time zone, something you can actually contribute to. Um, but periodically checking that label in GitHub will um, help you find those easy areas of contribution. All right. Yeah, having the time having the time zone uh, link uh, readily available is re is really important too. So then I have because uh, like uh, Ben and Destiny are in Japan, and then somebody else is in New Zealand. So I I kind of have where people who are a workshop host um yep. listed for yep. easy access yes all right jordan I, I see you were going to ask that was there anything else you wanted to ask before we move on oh um, that's perfect thank you i was thinking perfect. if i wanted to co-host can i see what needs it and that was exactly yay <laughs> all right um now part of this creating an event on meetup.com is preparing a zoom link um, so if you're going to host your events as a, an online um, video conference, then you need to have the Zoom link prepared when you publish the event on meetup.com. Um, Zoom has a, a cool feature where you can host free meetings up to 40 minutes, but most online workshops end up being longer than that. Um, so we have a handbook page here, to, steps to schedule a Zoom meeting. The training team owns a a paid Zoom account that uh, online workshop hosts are available to use. If you have your own Zoom account that lasts an hour, you're free to use that. Um, but if you don't have that, we still want to make Zoom, like using Zoom accessible to anyone who wants to contribute. So there's no need for you to go out and purchase a Zoom account or another software in order to host a Zoom meeting. Um, this, this page here, steps to scheduling a Zoom meeting, will let you know um, you can come and request a Zoom link from the training team, and we are happy to provide that for you. All right. <clears throat> so something else I wanted to point out um, in the GitHub issue um, is on the right here, when you create a GitHub issue, it is automatically assigned to a project. And in this case, um, this is added to the content development project and um, it has a status ready to create. Now, the general contributor can't edit the status. Again, that has to be modified by an administrator. But what the administrator can do is we can move this through the processes of creating a online workshop. So we can note whether it's a draft in progress, a review in progress, or published or closed. So Jordan, before you were asking like, the topic is better, but is the content ever bettered? The ideal process for an online workshop is when it's triaged, it will first be added to drafts in progress. Then when the facilitator is has created the slides or the content they're going to present, they would add a link to the GitHub issue here saying, these slides are ready. Could I have a review, please? And then the administrator will move that to the review in progress status. And the training team announced things waiting for a review in its weekly meetings. So every Tuesday we have a weekly meeting and we go through our GitHub project board and we pull out everything that is waiting for a review and list that. So then the editors in the training team can pick up on that and review things for us. Um, so that happens every Tuesday. So preparing your slides the night before might not be enough time there. So again, that's why we like to prepare things like three or four weeks out. Um, get your slides ready, post that up here. If you can give us a week or two, then we can get a few people to review your slides or content for you um, before that is um, presented. The review stage is not mandatory at the moment. Um, and maybe the training team needs to reconsider that, I'm not sure. Um, so far, we've only had a very limited number of facilitators um, but 
maybe from here on, as we start to get new contributors, we can look into making this review process a bit more comprehensive so that it covers more people. Um, something to consider, I guess. Um, but yeah, so there is a review in progress stage. Once you've come this far, you now hold your online workshop. You host your online workshop. So coming back to the handbook, <clears throat> we have come down to hosting an online workshop. And um, this page is pretty extensive, but basically these are all tips from um, previous online workshop hosts um, who have listed things that have worked well for them. So if this is your first time hosting an online workshop, um, I recommend you skim through this. Um, it gives a few different notes on um, what works and what doesn't work. Um, a note on screen sharing, what does this say? Um, something I wanted to mention, which might not be in the handbook, so I might need to add that later, is I generally don't share my entire screen um, because some people have a hard time looking at small text. To be honest, the text you see at the moment could still be a bit small for people. I've had people comment in my online workshops asking me to make the text even larger. Um, so sharing your full screen sometimes isn't the best uh, way to share your screen. Um, so at the moment, what you see is just one portion of my screen, one browser window. Um, and that's usually a better way of sharing your screen. Just, just a tip there from me. Um, you can also have like icebreakers at the beginning of your session. I always start with a question um, from one to five, how would you rate your knowledge or experience regarding whatever topic we're going to be talking about today? Um, I also like to ask people where they're joining in from. Um, it's interesting because you can have people from Europe and Asia and Americas all joining in at the same time. It's really fascinating to see the, the experience and the cultures everybody brings into these sessions. Um, so yeah, once you've hosted your online workshop, coming back to the GitHub issue here, you can tick that off. And then we have some after an online workshop steps we ask hosts to go through. So I did want to briefly go through these steps. So clicking on this link will open a handbook page, um, which is this handbook page over here after an online workshop. So um, there are three steps to follow after you have finished facilitating an online workshop. The first one is record attendance. So we have a spreadsheet here. Um, it's a manual process at the moment, but the training team records every online workshop that was hosted. So you can see we have a date at the left. We have a meetup URL. The meetup URL is the link over here from meetup.com. Um, what language was this hosted in? What was the topic? Then we have RSVP and total attendees. So when you open the meetup.com event, you will see the number of attendees who signed up for the event. So for this event today, we had 19 people sign up. Um, but we only got five people who showed up, which is totally fine. Um, I usually get somewhere between a quarter and a third of the people who sign up actually attend my session. Um, so if your attendees are a lot lower, don't be disheartened. That happens for everyone. So, what, so under RSVP, you would write the number of people who signed up in meetup.com, 19. And then under total attendees, you would write the actual number of people who came to the session. Me as a host, I often forget to mentally record how many people came. So that's something I often ask my co-host to keep an eye on. Um, after the session's done, let me know how many people came today. Um, and then the last thing we list on the Google spreadsheet is a wordpress.tv link, which comes in to the second thing you do after an online workshop. And that is upload the recording of the workshop to wordpress.tv. Um, so again, we have different steps here um, that tell you how to do that. Um, what you would, so you would upload the video to wordpress.tv and similar to how online workshop facilitates it, facilitators are vetted, uploads to wordpress.tv are also vetted because, before they become public. So um, this, this um, handbook page here will list the steps. So basically what you would do is you would upload the video to wordpress.tv and then you would ping a faculty member in the training team, letting them know you've uploaded the video. 
so that they can go in, check the content and approve the video so that it becomes public on WordPress.tv. So once you've completed that process, you can come back to the spreadsheet and add the link to your video, to your recording in the spreadsheet. Um, you'll see some of these last um, sessions here don't have a video link, and that is probably because the video is still going through that upload and approval process. All right, so just to refresh, after session's done, you would record the attendance in the spreadsheet, you would upload your video to WordPress.tv, and then finally, we have an optional feedback form you can submit. So how was your experience hosting an online workshop? Um, you can send us your feedback and Laura sent us feedback that we needed a handbook page about co-hosts that got created um, in a similar fashion. If you send us feedback about how your experience was, we uh, are eager to apply that to our processes to make the online workshop hosting experience even better for everyone. Phew, and that was a lot of content. There is one final section I want to point out, and that is the resources section um, in the training team handbook. So the resources aren't specific to Word um, online workshops, but they are relevant. <clears throat> so we have a few resources here. First one is the training team's accessibility checklist. Um, as a, if you're creating slides for an online workshop, um, we want you to be mindful of accessibility needs some community members may have and create accessible slides or other resources. So we've recently created an accessibility checklist to help you understand like what does it mean to be accessibility minded. Um, I won't go into all the details here, but I did want to point out we do have this document and we encourage you to reference as you prepare for your online workshop. If you are facilitating this session and you have a different speaker coming to present, um, please do share this resource with them so that they can prepare accessible slides as well. Another thing we want to point out is the brand usage guidelines. <clears throat> so the WordPress project, um, we don't promote specific brands. Um, the WordPress project is open for any person from any brand to come and join and contribute to. So in your online workshops, if you ever mention a brand, we ask that you mention at least two or three alternatives as well. So it doesn't come across that you're endorsing just one brand. Um, for example, if you're talking about um, adding a contact form to your site, rather than say, use this plugin to add a contact form, uh, we want you to introduce, there are three or four plugins that help you add contact forms, list all of them, and then in this workshop, we're going to be working with this one, but you are free to use any of these others as well. Um, so make sure you're not endorsing one specific brand. The third one here is about promotional guidelines. <clears throat> and just as we don't endorse one specific brand, we uh, don't use the online workshop platform for people to promote themselves. So. I'm hosting this online workshop, but this isn't a stage for me to tell people how wonderful I am and what I do and get people to follow me on socials and buy my products. Um, so we have some guidelines here about what you can and can't say in your presentations um, to promote yourself. Um, we want to make sure you are credited for the contribution you make. Um, all these online workshops are hosted by volunteers. Um, they don't get any compensation for it. Um, so somewhere in your presentation, you are welcome to um, mention your social accounts so that people can follow you and look more into you. Um, but you, we ask that you don't add it to every single slide. You just have one slide that has whatever social information you want to share. Um, but then we want you to move on and focus on the content of WordPress you're presenting that day and not pr promote yourself. Um, so I won't go into the details here, but I do want to point out we do have a few resources we'd like you to reference as you prepare for and host an online workshop. And that is the conclusion of all the content I had prepared. Are there any final questions or comments people wanted to bring up before we conclude? Ah, Laura, yes, you bring up a good point. A co-host does not need to know the subject matter. So the role of a co-host, again, is to help the host prepare a safe space for people to come and learn, um, which might include engaging with 
um, enthusiastic contributors or in, in sometimes kicking people out if they don't follow code of conduct. Their job isn't to teach the content. So for example, somebody might be hosting an online workshop about APIs, WordPress APIs, and you have absolutely no idea about what WordPress APIs, you don't even know what an API is. Um, you are still free to come and co-host for that person because your job is to make sure the, safe, the space is safe. Um, so yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Um, please come and co-host any workshop. And in fact, if you come to a workshop you don't know a lot about, you can learn at the same time as co-hosting for that host. So um, yeah, you get double benefits. And then Laura, you also mentioned no flashing logo behind you. Um, so yes, like we don't want you promoting yourself on your slides. We don't want you promoting yourself on, the, on your backdrop and on your wall and all that as well. Um, you see, I promote the WordPress logo here. Um, you're allowed to do that. Um, but not your not yourself. Great. Any other questions or comments? Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, if if there was any final thoughts or comments you wanted to drop, feel free to leave them in the Zoom chat. Um, but thank you everybody for joining, and hopefully you have a better understanding now of what it means to host or co-host an online workshop for the training team on learnword.wordpress.org. Thank you very much for your time. And I look forward to seeing you all again in another online workshop in future. Bye, everyone.